Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jasim Azzawi. Kurdistan President Barzani has called for the establishment of three autonomous regions in Iraq, a Kurdish north, a Sunni center, and a Shiite south. His plan is a carbon copy of a discredited proposal previously championed by U.S. Vice President Joseph Biden. Barzani's proposal also envisions a weak center in Baghdad, something no Iraqi government will ever tolerate. Consequently, future confrontation is inherent in Barzani's scheme. When Barzani's views regarding oil-rich Kirkuk are taken into consideration, the chances of future war between Baghdad and Erbil increases dramatically. Kirkuk must be incorporated into Kurdistan, even if we have to take it by force, Barzani insists repeatedly. But history is replete with the folly of men who insist on all or nothing. Invariably, they end up with nothing. Two months after Iraq's election ended, political stalemate remains. No party won a majority to form a government. And now the stalemate is causing political bickering, with old issues resurfacing. In a recent interview, Kurdish leader Mas'ud al-Barazani demanded that any coalition partner of his would need to accept Kurdish wishes regarding the oil-rich city of Kirkuk and the role of Kurdish military force, the Peshmerga. Barzani won 54 seats in parliament. That makes him a powerful ally, which explains his bold demands. He also stated that Iraq's only hope for stability was to divide the country into three, the north for the Kurds, central and western Iraq for Sunnis, and the south for the Shia. He proposed making Baghdad a federal capital. The Kurdish leader added that all talk of a strong, unified Iraq was a fantasy. The idea of dividing Iraq is likely to be rejected not only by many Iraqis, but also by regional neighbors, including Turkey, Syria, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. A similar U.S. idea presented in the past by then-Senator Joseph Biden was strongly rejected and criticized. Amid the haggling and political uncertainty, such talk of division adds fuel to an already inflammatory situation. Omar Saleh for Inside Iraq. To discuss what lies behind the proposal of Mas'ud Barzani, president of the Kurdistan Regional Government, I am joined from Baghdad by Mohammed Ihsan, the Kurdistan Regional Government representative in Baghdad, and from London by Kurdish Affairs Analyst Freydun Hilmi. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Iraq. Freydun Hilmi, this proposal, as outlined by Mas'ud Barzani, the president of KRG, in his interview to the New York Times, is a carbon copy of what uh, Vice President Joseph Biden proposed almost two, three years ago and was rejected completely by the Iraqis as well as by Arab nationals, and they called it a sectarian politics. So what makes Mas'ud Barzani go over an old ground? Well, Jasim, the proposal um, is not workable, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately. Um, Mr. Barzani has obviously taken the uh, Joseph Biden uh, proposal and he's trying to uh, make a dream out of something which is not practical. I mean, he says that a united Iraq is a dream, but the proposal that he's come up with uh, and Joseph Bi Biden has come up with is also a dream. It cannot last. I it may uh, be possible to have three different heads uh, or three different uh, parts of Iraq, each ruling itself, with hardly anything between them to keep them together. Uh, and, of course, that would last for a very short length of time, and it will then um, disintegrate um, in the same way as a united Iraq is supposed to be disintegrating. The, uh, the whole system, right from the start, uh, was uh, flawed. I said so right from the beginning. Uh, in this country, we have had recently an election which has ended up in a hung parliament. And this has been uh, regarded as a disaster as far as Britain is concerned. Uh, everybody is very unhappy about it. They're trying to solve the problem. And yet in Iraq, they actually started with this disaster and they want to maintain such a sort of coalition. Um, whereas in Iraq, the differences are much greater the uh, conflict is much higher and the hatred between the different you parts you use two words let me use them and throw them at mohammed ihsan he called it a dream 
and he called it a disaster. The question begs itself again, why would the president of KRG go back to an idea that has been rejected by the Iraqis? First of all, good evening to you and to your guests in London and your audience anywhere. First of all, it's not, second, it's not an, a proposal coming from President Barzani or it's a photocopy or a copy model from Biden. The Iraq by itself now is a federalism, it's a federal state, and still we are discussing which sort of federalism we can adopt. One region or multiple provinces or two blocks or three blocks or four provinces or four, four regions or five regions, still this is uh, it's discussable among, among Iraqis and the idea of federal Iraq is not coming from Biden. It, it comes all the way, it goes back to 1992 when the first INC conference in Vienna, then in Salah Adin, then in London, where most of the Iraqi opposition groups at that time they adopt that, that system and currently Iraq is a federal state. It's not a proposal, it's not something new, but just Mr. Barzani, he stressed, as has been, as has been cleared through, through the article, which is said, Mr. Barzani, that he believed that the only hope left for stability, which means for security, to keep Iraq secure, divided to three federal entities. Sunnis can be responsible for their security, Shia can be responsible for their securities, and Kurds, they are now in charge of their security. If you look at the Kurdish example, it's, a one, it's one of the best examples. So far, Kurdistan, comparing to other parts of the country, is secure. That was his intention, not dividing the country. Can I just say hello to you as well, uh, Kak Mohammed? Um, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, we have, you say we've got a federal state in Iraq, but in fact, we don't have a federal state. We have a, a region that I is governing itself, and we have the rest of Iraq. That's it. There is no, yeah, but, but it's not a federal state because a federal state has yeah. to have um, specific uh, rules and regulations, and it has to have speci specific laws to govern the uh, the various parts. You can't have just one one federal state, which is Kurdistan, and a lot of Iraq, which is uh, completely uh, un, uh, unchart uh, uncharted. There is no rule there. Mm -hmm. There is no rule of law. There is no government no, no, that no. you can call it a government. No. And you can't. You see, uh, it's, uh, can I just can I just finish, Kak Hassan? Okay. The point is that you okay. you can't you can't you can't build a, a room, and then build the house to suit the room. Well, that's what has happened here. We, we, had a federal, we had a state that was ruling itself and governing itself for 12 years. And then suddenly, we are part of Iraq again, and we want Iraq to be the same as us. And we want to divide up Iraq into two, two other parts that will be similar to us. And that's not possible, because the people of Iraq are different people. They have different uh, relationships with their surroundings. Let him answer and that, it's just not uh, work. Uh, Mr. Faridun. But, be, but, but before he answers, let me just remind Mohammed Ihsan uh, that federal law has never passed the Iraqi parliament. Uh, basically, it's dead on arrival. Mr. Azawi, Mr. Azawi, with all my respect to you and to Kak Faridun, please go back to Iraqi constitution, read it carefully with your glasses. Read it carefully, and you will see what we have in the Constitution. What's the authority this is of what the we capital do on a daily of basis, the federal Mohammed capital? And what, into we, the and what we have? Read it I and was, interpret I, it. I Let me just part, remind uh, you: there no, no, was a proposal no, no. for a federal it's, it, law, is, and that federal law has no, never there, passed. That was, Let us just not kid each other. That was that was no, no. That was a, that was a proposal for a federal law for Basra that's been declined and not been passed. Even the people of Basra, they never get 10% of the referendums from the, for their own people, which was totally different story. I, what I'm saying, Iraq, it's a federal state. We have a region by its constitution, a region and governor rates. You have a united region, which contains of some Kurdish uh, provinces, three, three Kurdish governor rate and other uh, other, the rest of Iraq. Is, is, this is why we have a federal state now. What has been mentioned by President Barzani, it was just regarding to stability. That proposal, because he said that the only way to live for, for keep Iraq safe and st stable, we have to do that one, which means that each part can take care of its 
on security until to rebuild the country well, together say, and have, have it a strong you. federal capital in there. There is a solitary, uh, an orphan sentence in the Constitution to say that Iraq is a dawla ittihadiyya. And now Mohammed Ihsan is taking that check to the bank to say Iraq is a federal uh, country, which is not. Right. But let me ask you about something else, well, Faridun Helmi. This use of fear, yeah. this uh, fear Mr. tactics. Mr. Azawi, read, read, read the Constitution. That makes two of us. You read it carefully. and I'll read it. But <laughs> Faridun Helmi, when Masoud Barzani uh, using this fear, you know, unless we have a federal state, otherwise Iraq is going to descend into chaos and there is no chance for Iraq or for the Constitution. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of this scare tactics? Well, I think that this is a, a, a mistake. It's a strategic mistake to, to be uh, seen as the cause of the disintegration of Iraq. That's a strategic error because you are surrounded by people who don't want you to be a state. They don't want you to be separate from Iraq. And you are going to have a lot of difficulty both with the uh, neighbors and as well as with the, with the Iraqi people and you are really creating a lot of enemies for yourself. You don't need to be the one to say that you want to divide Iraq up. You, by all means, ask for your rights, ask for your constitutional rights. And by the way, the constitution that you're talking about, Kagi Hassan, was not really passed by the people. I mean, we know how fraudulent all the elections are. I have actually made a study of the number of people that voted for your constitution. And in fact, a very small minority actually voted for it. For such a, uh, an earth-shaking constitution as was imposed on the Iraqis, they were not given the chance to actually say their say. And therefore, you've got a constitution that is not legitimate and it's not being voted for. That's a, that's uh, a powerful charge. Let him answer it. Go ahead, Mohammed. That constitution is still valid and still we are running the country based on that constitution. If some people at that time, they didn't manage to, to go to referendum or they had different agenda to block the whole pro political procedures or uh, process at that time that belongs to them, but they are now today back to the government, back to political process, and they are part of that constitution again. Making so, a so chaos, really, the, so I, I don't the think- So we're back that Saddam used to do. That we are back to the Sudanic no, no, uh, times, no, where when you are, when you are just a moment, am, you are I imposing am. something on the people, and you are saying that's it. You've got to follow the imposition. That's what Saddam is. I am do. not. I'm, uh, Mr. Helmi. That was. Not, I'm not in charge of imposing constitution, really. I am. That was not. Uh, that was that not my task, uh, and that was not that. But that constitution, uh, practically, is a constitution in Iraq. We've government based on that constitution. Iraq is running based on that constitution. And people are running the country based on that constitution so far, which means still but until they don't today, want it. until the now, people this do moment, not want it, my that, friend. Uh, okay, there, if they don't want it, there is way to 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 change to amend the constitution as well. In each constitution, they there couldn't. Is a way, they tried. There is a key to how. But they no, tried. There is there is, there is actually a, there is a, when, actually one. F uh, there is one four two in the can constitution. Can I ask you, Mr. Can I ask you, Mr. Helmi, when was when was the last time you were in Iraq? Let us not make it personal, Mohammed Ihsan. What's that, there what's is, that got to yeah, do with it? Exactly, am, what's I that got to do with it? Let, let, let me add when something here. Let Baghdad. me add something here, Mohammed Ihsan. Article 142, Article 142, yeah. which Mr. Helmi has yeah. referred to, it stipulates that after a certain period of time, no. before, before 2007, the Iraqi parliament will convene again and in, review the entire constitution. Now we are in 2010, Mohammed Ihsan. Mohammed Ihsan, we are in 2010. I, 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 look, look, Three I, years Mr. have passed, Mr. which Azawi. means that that constitution Mr. has a, a huge a question mark going over it. But let me ask you about something very important, Mr. Masoud Barzani, your boss said, and that is Article 140, the implementation of Article 140, which is basically the disputed area about Kirkuk and Khanaqin and part of Al-Musul. The question as posed by the editor-in-chief of Anyway, uh, Azos Hardy. He says, when Masoud Barzani and Jalal Talbani, they were not able to extract 140 of al-Maliki after four years, what makes Masoud Barzani think he can do it right now? First of all, he's my boss and he's the president of all Iraqi Kurdistan as well. Second, uh, Article 140, it's still valid. And still we have a higher committee 
which based in Baghdad, I am representing Kurdistan and we are working daily. Just yesterday we had a meeting for that and we are working and it's implementing. We are still at the stage of normalization. This is why for the coming government, we are going to push them harder to full Feel their promises you and to the implement it fully. Work. You try that with Al-Maliki, it, it, it didn't it work. Might, oh, no, no, it is, I, I tell you, it's not working fully because in Iraq there is no, no way to get either all or none, as you said at the beginning. Because we know, we know the current situation, we know what Maliki can do or what others can do, what cannot. Between Al-Maliki and between uh, Al-Hakim and between Al-Ja'fari and between Ayad Allawi, there is almost unwritten law, and that is, this disputed area, this desire by, by the KRG, by Mas'ud Barzani and Jalal Talbani to wrestle Kirkuk out of, uh, out of Iraq, is just not going to work. There is a saying in this part of the country, they, they take you to the edge of the water, to the river, and they bring you thirsty. Mas'ud Barzani, he thinks he can, he just can wrestle it out of them. Yes, I mean, uh, I was actually shocked when I found out that Kirkuk was lost. They didn't uh, win Kirkuk. Um, <laughs> and also, uh, I mean, al-Maliki was one of the people who actually wrote the constitution. He was one of those who wrote the constitution. And if he is against 140, and if he's against some other parts of the constitution, then what kind of a constitu constitution is this? I mean, the people don't want it. Al-Maliki doesn't want it. Alawi doesn't want it. Uh, Tariq al-Hashimi doesn't want it. So who wants it? Just the Kurds. That's what I, what I said. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it is trying to um, tailor Iraq uh, on uh, the model of Kurdistan, and you can't do that. There are different, di different areas, different regions, different people. Um, you either go, uh, go it alone and declare your independence and say you're an independ independent state, or you try and cooperate, and your uh, strategic interest is in Before cooperating with the Before we go into the, the secession, uh, Faraidun Hilmi, let me, let me ask about <laughs> Mohammed Ihsan, about Kirkuk. Uh, it has uh, 12 seats. The Kurds, they got uh, six seats, and the Arabs and the Turkmen, they showed a great showing with six weeks. And some people said, despite the, the huge number of people, the influx from the north, and yet it was 50-50. There is, there is a message here to Ayad Allawi, and there is a message to Baghdad that you cannot mess with Kirkuk. First of all, Kirkuk was the city who had been Arabized for more than three decades by Ba'ath Party and a huge number of newcomers coming to the city in order to change the demography. This is first. When Article 140, which was being voted for, and it was part of the Constitution, it was the mainly constructed to deal with the Arabization policy, which means to return the people, the victim is back to their homes and to their lands. Second, what is, uh, you are saying something contradictory to your word. If Kurds were, we were, if we were getting new cameras to Kankuk or we were changing demography to the city, it was not, we, we had no chance to get 50 50%. But we, we no, the numbers, the Genikov, numbers that they speak two, two, two themselves. Themselves. No, no, uh, the numbers speak for themselves, six and six. What do you uh, make of the advice by the American government to you? not to insist on this all or nothing, not to push so hard, because that will be a we major are, crisis. And they reminded you of taking, what happened in the Balkan. And when you insist on all or nothing, are, invariably people end up the, with nothing. First of all, the article is with me, which is one of the point of view of one of diplomats, of American diplomats. We are not taking advice neither from America nor from anyone else. We are depending on what That's we have true. and how we are, we, are, we, are leading, we are leading our people the way we were getting our powers from them. We are not at all in the hands of American or anywhere else. Kirkuk and other disputed areas it is part of an issue which has been plotted and, and designed by uh, the treatment of it has Let's been designed from by the Friday Constitution. Go ahead, we are working for it to work hard and to Sorry, implement that I article in order anybody. to sort out that issue. I don't believe any of the Iraqi leaders are actually doing things the way they want. They're all asking the Americans. They all have to listen to the Americans. They all have to take orders from them, and they've been doing so for even longer, before, lo longer than 10 years before uh, you know, Iraq was um, uh, occupied. So to say that we are doing this and we are doing that is not right. They are, they are behaving in a funny way, yes, and that's going to cause the Kurdish people a lot of harm. And I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about that because Mr. Barzani, unfortunately, 
uh, did something like that a few years ago when he attacked the Turks, uh, again verbally, which he didn't have to do. Um, anything that you do, you have to keep to your chest. You don't, you don't declare it and cause havoc and get uh, people shooting at you because you think something, uh, because you, are, you intend something. Uh, Mr. Bazani should try to be a little bit more political than uh, revolutionary. He is no longer a revolutionary leader. He is, uh, he is responsible for the population of, uh, of northern Iraq, of the Kurdish, Kurdistan of Iraq. Mr. Barzani, he was never ever revolutionary after 2003. He was the most wise guy so far in the country. This is why most oh, of the Iraqi, Iraqi figures and leaders, they are coming to Kurdistan to, at least to listen to his advice and to <laughs> Let him to guide them which way we can we can form the government or which way we can impose stability and peace, not just in Iraqi Kurdistan, in all over the region. That was his Mr. target. And that was this our is a season for making coalitions. Well. Everybody is trying to gain political support of another party. This is nobody is seeking the advice of anybody. Is, neither no, Alawi no, no, nor no, no, Jamaliki is, nor Jafari nor Hakim. Are, they are, all want are, to be prime means, minister. Let's which, not kid each other. Each one, this is their right to be prime minister. Each one is working for himself to be prime minister, Mr. Azawi. This is why we enter politics. You enter politics to, to do something for your people, for the people who vote for you. But it will depend who, who can. You also, Do you call you action or how you, can you find the government? Of course, Mr. Ihsan, of course it's the right. You also rights. have to protect what you've got. You have to look after what you've got oh. and not just squander it. Not, not allow, allow it this to be is, lost. This is a grave warning, Mohammed Ihsan. Did you hear what Faridun Hilmi the, says? Because he says, right now, Mr. what he's Hilmi, saying, basically, Mr. Baghdad Hilmi, is weak. Sure. But in five, ten years from now, when be, it, it goes back sure. on strength, there if might Baghdad, be some look, Mr. Hazawi, grave consequences. If Baghdad is weak, Give me a chance for Mr. Free. If Baghdad is weak, which means we are going to be weak. If we are strong, Baghdad is going to be strong. Mohammed Ihsan, this is a historical chance for the Kurds to wrestle Kirkuk and other disputed areas. And Masoud Barzani himself has, has threatened several times that he's going to take it by force if he has to. Don't take it. He has, he's on record, as, Muhammad Ihsan says, that he, he's on record is saying that please, if I cannot get it by diplomacy, you are, you I will be getting it by, Mr. by force. And that, Mr. that Azawi, irked the Turks. You are, I'm not Mr. Azawi, you are, you, are, you are managing an interview between two peoples. You are not. If you are going to be my, my contact, why are you are getting another one to, 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 to have interview with me? I would I, like I, you to I, answer I, what please, I just told you. Go ahead. We have to work together. Article 140 is a part of the Constitution. Without implementing it, there will means there will have we have we will not have enough chances to rebuild the country, which means we are going to go back the before pre-1991 chaos, Arabization, genocide, wars. Mohammed Hassan, this is a wonderful conciliatory and peaceful message, contrary to several that, statements by Masoud al Barzani when he says, "If we I cannot get it diplomatically, I will wrestle it by force." For I don't help me. Last words for you. Go there ahead. Well, I don't think he can wrestle it by force. I don't think that's possible. I think he, he, the best thing he can do is to work with his own people to strengthen himself. Uh, I don't mean to strengthen himself against the center, but to, to, to create a, a good prosperity in, in the country. I don't think that the people are very happy with what is happening in, the, in Kurdistan at the moment. And he needs to address that part first before he starts uh, having dreams of grandiose and uh, dreams and... Uh, and, and, and mix up things like uh, genocide and stuff like that, which has nothing to do with the current situation. Faridun Hilmi, Mohammed Ihsan, gentlemen, yes. thank you for being guests on Inside Iraq. Thank, thank you. you. To watch the show online, please visit our website, aljazeera.net forward slash English. We have reached the end of this show. Join me next week when we take another look inside Iraq. Until then, this is Jasim Azawi wishing you a great week. <laughs>